One of the things that has always uh, mystified me about about the particular case of lupus is that it seems to have less visibility and, and less support than than uh, the other autoimmune diseases like type one diabetes and multiple sclerosis. And I was wondering if you could share your thoughts about about that and what needs to happen so that uh, the situation changes. Yes, so I, I think that that is uh, at least in part true. And part of that is because um, there hasn't been as much advocacy at a grassroots level for support of lupus research. Type 1 diabetes particularly because it affects children uh, engenders a lot of grassroots support and the same has been true of multiple sclerosis. But in the last 10 or 15 years a number of foundations have been formed to help support uh, lupus research and to increase the visibility of the disease. It is, at least in the United States, uh, a disease of underserved populations um, and, and so it's been a little uh, more difficult because of health disparities to bring that to the fore. But I think that now that there's an increasing um, uh, awareness that this is a disease that causes a lot of morbidity and, and that there needs to be more support for it. I think that lupus researchers in general are extremely passionate about um, uh, discovering new means to treat this disease. So the research community itself is very passionate about this and we just need to um, uh, um, get more grassroots support so that this spills over to more support at the governmental funding uh, agency levels. Let's talk a bit more about this last point you were making in, in terms of uh, finding new therapies. Because again, thinking about arthritis or thinking about multiple sclerosis, over the past 10 years there's been the big success, su success stories. And in the case of lupus, I don't think that there has been any poster child that one could say this is what we've got. Yeah. Do you think that again has to do with support or is that more biologically the disease is much more complex? Is this a problem of clinical trial design um, or all of the above? I, I think all of the above. I, I think it's become very clear that lupus is a very complex disease and that um, our animal models have not um, uh, led us um, in a direct way from uh, curing or treating an animal model to curing or treating a human disease because the disease is so complex and, uh, and, and takes a long time to develop and involves so many different kinds of causes and so many different kinds of organ involvement um, that each patient uh, is different from every other patient. And because of this uh, heterogeneity in the disease, um, the clinical trial design has been very difficult. Um, in, in rheumatoid arthritis, for example, there, there are very clear out, outcome measures that are used in every single clinical trial. In lupus, there's been a lot of argument and discussion over what the right outcome measure is. And uh, because the patients are often treated with all kinds of other therapies as well, it's been very hard to uh, see a clinical effect of a new drug on top of what already is a fairly heavy uh, regimen of immunosuppressive uh, therapies. So, so I think that um, there's been uh, a lot of uh, new thought about how we should best design clinical trials and, um, uh, and, and a lot of new thought about biology. Um, it's been surprising in a lot of ways because we often don't know when a new drug comes out and we try and use it whether it's going to be useful in lupus as opposed to other diseases. And I think some of the big surprises have come from uh, some of the new drugs that have failed in lupus and yet been successful in other diseases. And, and I, for me, the biggest example is uh, B cell depletion with rituximab, which did not... Uh, uh, give a good clinical effect in lupus, even though we think of lupus primarily as a B-cell disease, whereas it was very successful in multiple sclerosis, uh, which we consider a T-cell mediated disease, or we did until until some of these results. And so I think that, uh, that, that the drugs are teaching us new things about the biology. 
um, and the biology of lupus is complex and um, the fact that we do have one new drug is, is a step forward, although clearly not, you know, as dramatic as what we've seen in some of the other autoimmune diseases. Yeah, th this last point you, you made about one drug working in, in, in lupus or not working in lupus and working in another condition is very interesting from, from another point of view. And that is that it seems to me that uh, pharmaceutical companies that are interested in autoimmune disease are beginning to think in terms not so much of each disease on its own, but instead trying to think about autoimmunity as one big problem and trying to identify uh, common points that apply to all of them, such that if they go and develop one drug against that, model, sure, the clinical trial will still be for one disease, but then it will just be a matter of extending the label to something else. The fact that, that there are examples like Rituximab and other examples out there that tell us that that doesn't seem to work would seem to be counter to, to what companies are, are doing. Would you uh, suggest to the companies to go back to the original model of one disease at a time or, or, uh, or do you think that there is hope to find a blockbuster that will target all the diseases at the same time? Um, I, you know, I think it depends on what mechanisms we're targeting. So for example, um, I think one area that's been underdeveloped is targeting of inflammation. And, um, and I think that that's starting now to explode. There have been a lot of new uh, discoveries in the components of inflammation, the endothelial component, the macrophage component, the neutrophil component. And I think that, that in those effector mechanisms, there may be a place to find the blockbuster type of drug. When we're talking about initiation mechanisms and systemic autoimmunity, um, it's been more difficult than anticipated. Um, and and there have been a lot of surprises along the way, which, which I, I think we, we didn't really understand how that was going to work. Um, and, and so I think that the pharmaceutical companies do have to be very careful about applying one immune mechanism broadly across multiple diseases, but yet there's a lot of opportunity in effector mechanisms. Let me, let me ask you one final question, because I'm sure that uh, our viewers are thinking, when is he going to ask him this question, which is a, a prototypical lupus question. I think that a lot of people find it very interesting and, and I guess worrisome that not only lupus, but other conditions such as arthritis as well, tend to affect women much more than men. Can you comment on any new biology that we may know that accounts for that or, or what uh, opportunities are coming out of, uh, out of that uh, gender specific effect? Yes. Um, <coughs> so I think there are two areas where there's been a lot of scientific development in this uh, arena. So the first is, is hormones. Um, uh, there's been some new developments in trying to understand how hormones affect the immune system. And with estrogen in particular, there's now the understanding that there's one estrogen receptor, the estrogen receptor type 1, that appears to be the receptor that mediates the immune effects uh, of estrogen. Um, and, and perhaps there might be a place to target hormones in that area. The other area is the genetics. And the genetics, I think, have been extremely uh, fascinating. Uh, as we know that uh, in lupus, uh, women that have an extra X chromosome or men that have an X, extra X chromosome are more likely to develop lupus. So we know that there's a clear genetic component. And there are now models available where we can study the genetics separately from the hormones. And in those models, now we can start to look at which genes uh, in that X chromosome 
are not turned off properly and perhaps there might be extra expression of those particular genes in females and uh, by looking at the genetics with a lot of new technologies that are now available to look at, at gene expression uh, it may be possible to identify which genes on the X chromosome um, are responsible uh, for for the um, predominance of, of lupus in females. It's a new area. Um, I, I see that in, in the next you know 10 years, 15 years, that this area will be developed and we might be able to identify um, uh, this, the, the genes that are responsible and start to uh, develop targets for those genes. So I'm optimistic about that approach. I think that will be um, a fruitful area for discovery. Yeah, we look forward to those um, advances and uh, thank you once again for coming to Madrid for the event. Oh, you're welcome, it's my pleasure.